What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate and Planner, and we're going to look at the action which is update task details. This action allows you to update a couple of the other things that you can't update using the update a task or update a task v2 action. So let's take a look at it today. So we're in Power Automate, we have a manual trigger flow here, uh, and if I click on next step, or new step, um, I can type planner into the search bar, choose a planner connection, and then scroll down to the bottom to find this task, this action here called update task details. If I click on it, it's going to ask me for a few things. So the first thing it's going to ask me for is my task ID. So I can click and I can select uh, from a drop down list of tasks that I have access to. Um, this isn't asking me for my planner group, it isn't asking me for my Office 365 security group, it's just asking me um, for my task ID, meaning that it's going to look through and find what tasks you have access to. Um, so from here, we're going to choose uh, Power Automate Task, this one. Now we can update the description of the task, so we could um, update it or give it a new description to say um, this is a task from a Power Automate video. And then we have these uh, this section here which looks a bit funny, it's got a, a little dotted line around it um, and it's got reference alias dash one reference resource link one and reference type of reference uh, one. So uh, and it's kind of a little bit hard to see, but essentially what this is, is this allows you to add in uh, links to different things. So the reason it's got a dotted line around it is because you can switch it from this input into an array and you can just put, uh, you can just write everything in an array here and it'll do it all or you can use this handy uh, input here. So what this is actually saying is we can put links into things. So if I flick over to Power um, to my planner board, this is the task that we're going to update. It's this Power Automate task here. And down here we have this part for attachments. So we can input a file, so we can upload a file to planner. We can put a link in or we can link it to SharePoint. Um, and if I click on link, it will then give me some different details of like address and text to display, etc. So if I come out of this and go back to Power Automate, in here, the reference for the alias is the text to display. So the text is going to come up to the user and say, this is what this is. So in this instance, I'm going to choose, uh, I'm going to say, um, great blog. Um, then in this part of it, we need to specify a valid uh, URL. So, um, and it has to be HTTP or HTTPS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.d365geek.co.uk. It's a fantastic blog. Uh, I wonder who writes it. Uh, and in here, I can specify a reference type as well. So I can say this is PowerPoint, OneNote, Excel. I can specify other as well. Um, I can also just leave this blank. So if I leave this blank and just run this now, click on test. I'll perform the trigger action, save and test. Run the flow, click done. Flow runs successfully. We can see it's updated here. And if I go over to my planner board and just refresh the page, uh, we can now see that there is a little um, icon there that says one attachment. If I expand this to the expand, the attachment is great blog. So if I click on that, it's going to take me to my blog page. Um, now, if you didn't realize that I had a blog, I do have a blog. Uh, I put a bunch of stuff on here about various things. Um, so my latest article was on translating text using the Azure Cognitive Services and Canvas apps. Um, you know, embedding Canvas apps into model-driven apps, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, my podcast, if you didn't know I have a podcast, I have a podcast, so you can come here and check out all those details, but so that's enough uh, shameless promotion. I'll go back to Power Automate. Uh, so if we click on Edit, um, what I can do is I can add another item into this as well. So if I click on New Item, what I can do here is I can say, um, do you know what, I want to I want to add an attachment. I want a, I want a put something in here that will allow multiple users to work on it. So I could say, right, I've got this spreadsheet or I've got this document 
um, that I want to give access to users or I want people to be able to um, see on this card so that they know where to go for the details. So if there's some specific instructions or requirements or information that is key to this card um, being completed or would be really useful for users, I can actually embed that straight in here using this um, using this action. So for the alias, I'm going to put um, a good spreadsheet. Uh, spreadsheet, just who doesn't love a good spreadsheet? Uh, for the reference type, I'm going to choose Excel, and then I just need a URL. So the URL, I'm going to choose OneDrive, but you can choose um, OneDrive or I think SharePoint as well would work. I'm just going to choose OneDrive for easy for ease. Uh, so I'm in my OneDrive here. Um, I've got a spreadsheet here that says flow con, uh, contract test. Do you know what? I have no idea why I've got this spreadsheet, but I do. Um, so uh, this is the spreadsheet that I use, so this is what it looks like, just so you can see. If I go back to this and click on the three dots, and then choose copy link, it's going to come up and it's going to say link copied, and I just click copy anyway. Um, and I can also specify the, the security permissions in here, like you know, people with link and view, um, etc., or um, people it needs to be people inside my organization, maybe that might be a good one. So, people inside my organization can do that, and we'll copy that link. So, I can do that, and then I can click back to my flow, and in this bit here, I can just copy and paste that, um, or paste that that link in. So that's looking at my uh, OneDrive. Now uh, it, it has <laughs> it has skewed the page a little bit, uh, which I think is a, a bug to do with the new um, new content editor, the new formula designer and, and, and um, direct content uh, editor, um, which you know is a great tool, but uh, I still think there's a little bit of work to be done here uh, around this, as you can kind of kind of see. Uh, but that's all I should need. So if I if I put that in. And I click on test, again save and test, run the flow, click done, run successfully, yay. So we go back to planner uh, and then actually we can see straight away um, it, it's popped up uh, and it's it's got a handy little logo here of Excel and I can just click on uh, a good spreadsheet uh, and it's going to take me to my OneDrive and open that spreadsheet. Um, I did change the uh, I did change the the access to be only people inside my organization can access this uh, just for security reasons uh, and I think that might be why it's taking a little bit of time to uh, to open up here but there we go it opens up and there we go we have access to that same spreadsheet directly from inside of uh, this um, this card. So that's a really handy feature because it allows you to add uh, these attachments and these links in so that you can um, you can do these sorts of things, um, which is which is really handy. Now, uh, I think behind the scenes, if you do upload an, a, a file to this directly, it actually goes into, I think, a SharePoint um, folder or a OneDrive folder that, that is related to this anyway. So I think best practice, especially if you are using uh, Planner uh, and, and using it as a, in, in terms of a team, uh, would be to get that URL and share it from there instead of trying to upload things, which is how this, this action works anyway. Um, the the reference type, uh, this is actually just going to de depend on the logo. Um, that's all it's, it's really doing, so that logo that we see here, all that reference type is, is just gives us that, that logo. Um, you can see that it's not even a required field, so in the first one I didn't specify it, and it doesn't give me a logo for that. Um, but I can choose any one of these, and it'll just give me a little little logo for it, which is which is handy. Uh, but yeah, I think that's super useful. Um, you could uh, loop through, um, you know, you could have this on on a, a planner board with a project. You could um, go off and you could find like a, a, you know where the the first um, the first card that you need to work on, maybe you're having a kickoff call with a customer and you need a specific piece of documentation um, that you need to fill out as part of your project process, uh, you could have a task to um, you know, select that, a, a Power Automate flow to, to select that task and then update that with links to those uh, documents or if you're working collaboratively with people 
you could like link documents that pe multiple people might need to use. So I think this is really handy and it's a fantastic thing that you can do in Power Automate. But as always, I like to know what you guys do with this sort of stuff. So let me know in the comments down below. Um, did you know this was here? Do you use this? Uh, were you a bit confused? The documentation is not great around this. Um, I can kind of see a lot of people asking questions about this online. So uh, when I was investigating how to use this, but um, it's actually a lot simpler than I thought. So, um, so yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, if you did like this video, if you could like and share it with your friends, it would be much appreciated. It really helps me grow this channel uh, and continue making more videos. Uh, if you've not already, please hit that subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll see you next time.